What is up, everybody? It's a Friday here. Brent Sibley, Miami Lawyer Daddy, Modern Injury Lawyers. Um, it's a great Friday because I just got news that I settled a case for $250,000. Now, the reason that I want to talk about this case is because it is a Florida bad faith case. Now, we haven't negotiated the exact terms of the settlement yet, so I'm going to not reveal any names at all. I would never reveal my client's name um, unless they gave me permission, but I'm not even gonna reveal the name of the insurance company or any details, just in the abundance of caution for the time being. But I'm gonna talk about what happened in this case so that you could learn how we did this case and how Florida bad faith law works. So <clears throat> in this case, uh, pretty standard case, rear end, big hit, guy needed a procedure on his neck. The insurance company sent us a normal disclosure telling us how much insurance there was, and it was $250,000 of insurance. And okay, you know, good insurance, way above average, blah, blah, blah. We start sending them um, our first demand package. You know, our client has a herniated disc. Please send us, uh, please make us an offer that's reasonable. Um, they make, they, I forget. I know that we made, in this case, five different demands. I think they ignored our first demand. Then we sent another demand. He had an injection, okay. We did another demand. Now we're asking for the policy limits, 250,000. Um, he had another procedure done or another injection done. Um, another demand for the 250,000. And he eventually wound up having a surgery and after we had sent them five demands, maybe five, I think it was actually six, um, all of a sudden they finally call us back or send us a letter and they say, oh, we're tendering our policy limits, but our policy limits are 25,000. And here's the disclosure. They didn't say we made a mistake. They didn't acknowledge the fact that they had kind of just ignore the file for like six months and all six of our demand letters. None of it, just kind of glossed over it. We're like, oh, we're gonna do the right thing and give you the policy limits of 25,000. Of course I said, no, we're not taking 25,000. Um, they wouldn't even explain what happened. They of course got a supervisor involved. They wouldn't really admit that they'd done anything wrong I had to speak to several different people at the insurance company and figure out what had happened because I figured it out after I had a few phone calls with different people there. There was a insurance policy with somebody by the, na by the same name, but they were in Hawaii. So they, the person in the insurance company had sent us a letter looking at the insurance policy for somebody in Hawaii instead of the actual person that bought their policy that lived in Miami. And no one caught it, no one reviewed our letters, no one cross-referenced the fact that we were asking for 20, 250,000 when, when the actual person whose insurance policy only had 25,000. They were extremely negligent. And of course I said, no, you guys have acted in bad faith. We're filing a lawsuit and we're gonna collect um, the cheapest you're ever settling this case for is 250,000. So we started, we filed a lawsuit, we filed a, what's called a proposal for settlement um, for 250,000. Finally, the lawyers got involved. They spoke to the people at the insurance company. They had their powwow. And um, after the proposal for settlement gives them 30 days to pay the amount that I put. So I put 250 and of course on, I forget what it is, it might be like the 28th day or the 29th day, they let us know that they are going to accept our offer and they are going to pay the $250,000. Of course, they're not gonna admit why, but the person who caused the crash really does only have 25,000 of insurance, but because they handled the claim in such a negligent and ridiculously unprofessional manner, failing to respond to letters, failing to clarify that 
their mistake, failing to acknowledge their mistake, failing to respond to the letter saying, oh no, there's, only, there's not 250,000 that you keep asking for 250, it's really only 25, letting six months and six letters go by without saying anything, in my opinion, and now that they're paying, in their opinion too, uh, clearly rises to the level of bad faith in Florida. Um, so the way it works is in Florida, if the insurance company handling the claim is deemed to have acted in bad faith during the handling of the claim, and then the lawyers are able to get a verdict against the person who the insured whose insurance company was handling their claim for them and then failed to act in good faith and, and acted in bad faith and the claim went to court and a huge uh, verdict came back, um, there is a very good argument that the insurance company has to pay and is responsible for the entire amount of the verdict regardless of how much insurance the uh, insured person, the policyholder, purchased from the insurance company. So in this case, um, the argument was very simple. If you had just told us that there was 25,000 of insurance, we probably would have just given you a chance to settle the claim for 25,000 within a reasonable time. He had a serious injury, wound up of course having surgery, and your policyholder uh, would have not had any liability. They would have given, they would have gotten a release and the case would have been over, but because you handled the claim in such a um, negligent manner, um, you failed to get a release early when you probably could have, and it spiraled into this whole thing, and um, you put your insured at risk for a huge verdict, and therefore you're going to be responsible for whatever that verdict is. It's not going to be just, it's not the kind of thing where you could just mishandle and butcher a claim uh, that with a $25,000 policy limit, and then let me or the lawyers go try the case, get a $10 million verdict, and then the insurance company can't just say, well, you only bought $25,000 of insurance, so here's a check for $25,000, and now you have to pay, you're responsible for the $9.975 million that's outstanding. That's not how it works, because the insurance company is the one who handles the claim for the entire time. So if the reason that the $10 million verdict came back was because of them, and they had a chance to settle the case, and they blew it, then they should be responsible for the whole thing, which is, I believe it's a very good law, even though it benefits me, I'm clearly biased um, in saying that I think it's a good law. Um, if it didn't exist, then the insurance companies would have no incentive to handle the claims in good faith. They could like they could do exactly what I just said. They could say, "Yeah, let's just fight every case. Worst case scenario, um, they go to trial, we lose big. If our policyholders get a five million dollar verdict against them, we can just send a check for ten thousand or twenty five thousand, and then we're off the hook." Um, so why would they ever pay a claim out ever? And then all the people that buy insurance from them have these huge verdicts against them and they go bankrupt and their whole lives are ruined. So that would not be, the incentives would not be right. So the fact that the insurance companies should be responsible for the entire value of the claim if they have a chance to settle the claim for a reasonable number within the policy limits early in the case and they decide to blow it, they either just are super negligent or they take a calculated risk because they want to save their own money selfishly, then they should say, okay, well, we're going to take the risk, so it has to be fair. We're going to save the money by not paying it and trying to, trying to not make a settlement. But then if we wind up losing a trial, then it has to be our money that we pay out on the flip side. So I do believe it's a fair law from an economics perspective and you know, game theory, um, incentive, so to speak. So that's the quick 10 minute summary of this case result. Uh, I'm very happy because when we find out after six months of treatment and a surgery that they're trying to say there's 25,000 of insurance after telling us in writing that there was 250,000, you can imagine the look on my face when I speak to my client and see the document. Um, but I told them, we're going to get you justice. I'm not going to settle this case for a penny less than 250000 And lo and behold, um, you know, a little bit of work later and a year later, um, we get it settled for exactly what we predicted I, w I predicted we would. So uh, it's a great result. I'm very, very happy. These are, 
these kind of cases are very difficult and you really have to fight hard to get what you believe is right. So it's a great day and I uh, hope you guys, uh, I think this video is mostly for lawyers out there because bad faith is kind of a more sophisticated subject. But for anybody else who wants to learn about bad faith in Florida and how it works, this is an example of a case that we were able to just resolve for 10 times the policy limits.